Let's go ahead and uh, kick it off. All right, all right. Welcome back to the Viascoin YouTube channel, everyone. I want to thank you for everyone who's take, taking the time to tune in here live. If you are, please smash the thumbs up. And if you're not here live, please smash the thumbs up. Uh, it always helps with the video rankings and just keeping this channel moving forward. You can see we're on coin cap. It's like coin market cap. It looks a little nicer here for the stream. So that's why um, I've got that open here for you, which uh, I'm talking about it, but you can't see it. So it looks like this. <laughs> and uh, as you can see, the market the market's down a little bit today, but it's sort of relative to where it's been for the last couple, really two months or so, and it's a rebounded a little bit uh, from this morning. But I'm not here to talk to you about the market, like prices specifically today. Uh, one of the main topics is going to be what kind of Halloween pumpkin should I carve? I got a link in the description. Head over to the Twitter and vote on that. That'd be super. Uh, I'd, I'd appreciate that. But uh, let me show you something cool. We'll actually get into the actual video here. So look, I'm not shilling VeChain. I don't even really own any VeChain. I just think this is cool. So it's a little bit of a use case. And uh, what we can see here is, you know, we, we, they're using this app to verify luxury goods, um, you know, on the VeChain blockchain. And what I like to see is projects with a real use case. You know, imagine if you got some expensive, you know, collectible Jordans, right? You got some really expensive shoes. It'd be cool, you know, if you could integrate this into blockchain tech. And, and if you start doing that from the initial production of these goods, it would be a lot easier and you could tag them with unique serial numbers and so forth. But um, I like to see anything and everything integrated with blockchain, if it's possible, makes sense. And I think this is just a decent example of that. Next up, I'm going to talk about one of the main pieces of the uh, video title here and I talked and I, I titled it with you know Zcash as a possible proof of work change which I found this crazy surprising to see like absolutely wild um, you know it's not the best news ever because it's pretty far out but it's it's good news nonetheless as far as I'm concerned for just decentralization of mining you know at least some and with that you know this is post by Zuko which is you know sort of the face of Zcash and uh, the important parts here to note are that in their next upgrade, that the next upgrade they'll support, which is essentially like the next hard fork, just like Sapling was, which I'll touch on Sapling here in a second. And uh, they're stating that the fall of 2019, I can't talk today, the fall of 2019 is they'd be looking to uh, potentially do that. So basically, exactly a year from now. And if you know Zcash, it's Zcash Co., Zcash Company. They're a little slow moving, but they, they do get things done. And I'm actually pretty impressed with the just the advancements tech side of Sapling. But my point is that it will activate some changes to Zcash mining. And if they're going to come out and say this, they're going to need to follow through on their word. Otherwise, they're going to look like some other projects I don't feel like naming right now that, you know, kind of said one thing, kind of led people along, and then really just did did sort of the opposite <laughs> but today's not about those projects today is about these projects in the title and uh, one of the main purposes Zuko lists is to increase the number and type of people who can acquire Zcash by mining <clears throat> this is why I like uh, this is why uh, again I cannot talk today this is why I like GPU mining because you know like my little brother when he's not gaming, he can turn it on and he can, he can get, you know, a little bit of Bitcoin. He can or mine a couple of Ethereum, you know, at least last year it could have. <laughs> now you maybe get a piece of it, you know, with just the GPU RX 470 in his gaming rig. And uh, <clears throat> it's actually kind of what uh, Zuko touches on here. I often think of my 14-year-old son who used to mine Zcash on his gaming rig when he wasn't playing Fortnite. Cross that out. Pub or Pug B. <laughs> <laughs> Watch out for Pug B, boys. It's a new game. I think you might mean PUBG. But um, either way, it's cool to see, surprising to see, especially from this guy on this account. So, um, you know, with all that in mind, I'm not saying this is going to change tomorrow, and this may never change, but um, if you're a GPU miner or you like to see just mining decentralized kind of that to that degree, it's cool. And if you recently bought an Equihash ASIC miner, well, it's still way out, so you got nothing really to worry about. There's going to be an ASIC miner for Equihash over the next several months that will probably put yours to shame. But, you know, only time will tell, right? So, uh, on that note, they also launched uh, their sapling upgrade, uh, which, again, is basically an upgrade to their tech. Um, one of the, the main 
the main piece here is a time reduction of 90% for construction constructing transactions. So your transaction is going to get compiled together and ready to send 90% faster, and a memory reduction of over 97%. So numbers this high in anything are pretty impressive so basically these transactions are going to be moving along faster it's also a big benefit to privacy tech where those uh, transactions were difficult um, to compute you know you got to think mobile you know how are you how are we going to be able to do this mobile I want to be able to you know send a private transaction off my cell phone where the CPU is not going to obviously be close to comparing to the one in my desktop computer here so just some things to think about it's cool to just see the space moving forward as a whole in general. Even in this bear market, it's good to see projects still, you know, falling through with their updates when you know their net their their market cap is down significantly. It's kind of weeding out some of the crappy projects, but some of the crappy projects have made you know too much money where they're still gonna be here for a little while. So as always, time will tell. If you guys want to throw some questions at me, um, I'll be checking the chat and uh, going um, trying to answer those for you. I want to thank everybody here for tuning in. We got a we got an NPC over here. That's awesome. <laughs> That's funny. FPGA mining is uh, you know I I want to make a couple videos covering that specifically. There's like purpose built mini FPGA miners, and then there's like the the Xilinx miners. Um, that you know you're more accustomed to seeing here floating around in the forums and groups and everything next up let's talk about uh bocked or backed um what this is if you're unfamiliar it is a new trading platform launched by the intercontinental exchange ice not the people who are going to take your babies away if you're worried about that not not that ice and the parent sorry if that offends people but I, I really don't care not that i don't care about you guys i love you guys but people are too sensitive you know, get offended by everything lately. It gets old. It really does. But anyway, focus the video. Um, the parent company of NYSE, New York Stock Exchange. Okay, um, but here's here's why you should care if you're not familiar. One of their primary staples is that they were awful physically delivered Bitcoin futures, a system designed specifically to entice in institutional investors to enter the cryptocurrency space. So let me just tell you, there's a lot of uh, institutional money already in the game that's been in the game, but there's also, as always, more money to potentially come. For example, like Fidelity announced that they've been mining for over four years. Just let that think in. Fidelity has been mining for over four years. <sighs> with the funds they've got to play with, just just think about it and, and come up with some numbers in your head and, and probably t times them by 10 and you'll get closer to where their uh, earnings from that are. Uh, so they stated that they would be previously scheduled for a November debut and then they pushed it back to December 12th, right? But there's a new rumor circulating that an anonymous source has come forth to suggest that U.S. regulators could approve physically delivered Bitcoin futures as early as the first week of next month. Well, guess what? It's October, and the first week of next month is next week. Okay, so that's, you know, next week. Pretty wild that this could kind of start rolling. And a couple big developments like this are, you know, I'm not saying we're even close to a bull run but a couple developments like this could compound and kind of get us going up in the right direction i don't know if it'll be like you know 2017 was but i would just like to see green on the charts for more than a couple days here um also if you're unfamiliar with the uh, von act etf etf um it's basically the etf that is the most likely has the most likelihood to be approved by the sec which is the securities and exchange commission if you're unfamiliar and it's like historically, if this gets approved compared to other markets, the price of Bitcoin and really cryptocurrencies as a whole will increase. That's kind of the general uh, consensus here. There's some people who disagree, some people who agree, but regardless, uh, that's kind of where most people fall in line and think. Next up, I want to talk about Monero. Okay, so they recently rolled out their bulletproofs, which uh, I'm going to get to the key point right here, which is fee reduction, which is absolutely wild we're going from 54 cents to like two cents not that's not 21 cents that's two cents okay and 96 percent drop that's a crazy decrease in uh transaction fees if we go over here this is like so this is a third party uh this is not you know or coin desk where i just showed you this chart this is bit info charts link in the description like everything i always talk about and down here we can see the transaction fees drop down here to two to three cents really we'll go one and a half to three cents down here 
um, up from we look this is a three month chart three month chart and you can see obviously every transaction is gonna cost you about 50 cents which you know that's the average transaction fee obviously it's gonna vary but most importantly that's kind of a lot uh, you know, if you take that versus what the actual coin is worth, and you, we, if we also scale back here when things were just going crazy in December, January, look at that day, 20 bucks for your average transaction fee, and we come down and you're paying 10 bucks average transaction fee, that's unacceptable. So, you know, we're down at two cents, and let's say that goes up to 20 cents. <laughs> I mean, that's that's okay. That's much better than going up to 20 dollars. Again, you know, bulletproofs is just, you know, one piece of the pie here, but this is tech that could be applied to more than just Monero. They're just one of the first projects to roll it out. Um, if you're not familiar, it's actually pretty, pretty cool. If you look deeper into bulletproofs, it's worth it. It's some deep stuff, so I'm not going to get too crazy with it, but it's not interactive zero, zero knowledge proof protocol with very short proofs and without a trusted setup. So a trusted setup is why a lot of people have, uh, have issues with Zcash and their trusted zero knowledge setup. So Basically, they greatly improve on the linear sized range proofs in existing proposals for confidential transactions designed really for Bitcoin, but other projects are implementing it. Um, you know, we come back here and it summarizes a couple of those things looking to dramatically decrease the weight of confidential transactions. Um, one of the uh, Monero devs or cryptographers, the Serang Nother, is um, quoted here saying blockchain bloat was definitely an issue for Monero. You saw those charts, which. Uh, yeah, that's obviously going to confirm what we just talked about. An important note here is it's worth noting that bulletproofs don't actually contribute to the privacy itself. They simply ensure the information is stored within a confidential transaction does not does not contain any false information. So, you know, just verify it's accurate there. Next up, we really uh, have nothing but questions left. And so I missed a couple, uh, a couple things here. So I just got a new member. Damien, hey man, thanks for uh, thanks for joining. I didn't know I got notifications for people joining like that, so I appreciate it, Damien. Uh, absolutely appreciate it. And we got Brandon Coin. Hey uh, man, keep keep doing your thing. Uh, Brandon Coin, he's got a GPU uh, mainly on mining crypto channel as well. If you want to check out his stuff, um, I appreciate the uh, the kind words and support there. And and yeah, I just hope I can survive until the next bull run, man, because this bear market is bleeding me out along with any everyone else. I feel like so. Um, I'd like to take a couple questions from you guys and then uh, wrap this stream up for you. Um, we got Tails just knocked out right there. Wow, Tails, what are you doing all knocked out? Um, but as far as uh, I've seen some questions about FPGAs, it's they're not as simple as you think. Uh, that's why I haven't really I haven't, I haven't been able to dedicate enough time to spending the expensive. You know, they're expensive to get and they're difficult to work with and you need the bit streams i can't code bit streams you know and, and i'm trusting that i'll be able to get some lucrative bit streams but best believe the best bit streams will never be the ones you get the best bit streams will always be at the big farms with the big money it's like everything else in the it's really i like to think of it as like the dark side of crypto mining so not that the same thing hasn't happened with uh, other other instances uh, instances in cryptocurrency especially mining, but you know, it's just being aware is, uh, I, I don't know. It's just, uh, I'm not a big fan of it. I'm hoping that, th that this changes a lot of open stuff, uh, comes out and, you know, we'll see, we'll see where it all go, where it all go goes. I can't talk, man. It's a bad day for me. Um, and, uh, what else? Hey, OX Zor. Thanks for uh, checking in, man. King Bennett thinks Miss Vosk needs some more videos. I'm going to go ahead and agree with that. Miss Vosk, where are you at? We need you uh, in the video production lab. <laughs> uh, any other coins on V8 other than Monero? Uh, I don't believe so. Um, and in the V8 uh, mining algorithm is uh, pretty power heavy, and it's actually pushed a lot of people away from it. But the Monero hash rate is still pretty high, so you know it's people are going to chase that profitability. Um, hey, Brando, uh, thanks for checking in from Slovakia, man. If you guys don't know, uh, I'm mainly Slovakian, so it's always cool to uh, see that. And I'm, I'm really excited to hopefully get back to uh, my mother country here one day whenever I get some time and funds to uh, make it out there and uh, check it out. What do I think about Hush? Uh, I, I'm, not, I'm not really a fan of Hush. Um, I, I, just don't, I just don't think it's going to be... It's not where I would put my hash power or money, personally. But if that's what you'd like to do, it's certainly up to you. I'm just a doge dad, and this isn't professional investment advice. I have to say that stuff lately, so here we are. 
<laughs> um, as far as a Raven, um, you guys know I've talked about it before. I like Raven. I think it's cool. I haven't really been hashing away on it. I, I don't have too many rigs like capable of hashing on Raven right now. And um, a lot of people are chasing it. So the the net hash is pretty pretty high on it. Sure, you know, it's gone up in price, but as it goes up in price, more GPUs make their way over to it, and here we are. Um, hey, I'm glad that uh, mining R, speaking of R, <laughs> I'm glad that that's been working out for you. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up, guys. Um, I really appreciate everyone taking the time to uh, to check in. Nefarious Fool, thanks for watching me for over a year as of today. That's pretty freaking wild. And uh, just to uh, to say one more thing, if you guys haven't already, subscribe to the Voscoin YouTube, YouTube channel. I'm actually almost at 70K. It's been tough going up in subscribers since the bear market, but you know, fortunately, um, I've been able to do that. And uh, so per my charts, I should hit 70K tomorrow, but uh, let me a hand hit the sub so we can get there. Smash the thumbs up. My goal is a thousand thumbs up for the video. And uh, above all, Thanks for taking the time to watch, seriously. It's you guys keep me going, doing this stuff, and just trying to bring you good coverage on everything cryptocurrency. So uh, everybody have a great day, and I'll see you soon with some more content.